Incorporated. Y'all know what time it is. Games, 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 games. Incorporated. Games, 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 games. Play games for a living. Hey guys, Glenn Nandelstat here with Games Incorporated, where we like to review, talk about, and play some board games. Happy Mother's Day! So I thought about doing a game that uh, had a lot of ladies in it, and what not a better chance for one of my favorite two-player card games, Marvel vs. A-Force. Now this is cool. It's a 200 card, you know, it's part of an LCG formula, so everyone who gets this is going to have a play set, you're going to have the two sets, and it's gravy. It comes with eight new main characters. Cool thing about this one, they're all ladies. You got the good girls, and you got the bad girls. So you got the femme fatales, uh, who's led by, like, uh, Black Cat, and there's a Dark Phoenix, and then you have the A-Force. And you got, like, She-Hulk, you have the good Phoenix, and there's a couple of others. But anyway... Let's take a quick look at the cards that come in this, some of the new abilities, just kind of give you a quick rundown. Then I'm going to come back, share all my thoughts about it with you. Okay, so let's start this off with the Femme Fatales. And those are the bad characters in this, the evil, if you will. Now keep in mind, they're all girls, and you're going to get four of these and four of the A-Force. So the first one up here is Black Cat. Now Black Cat has an interesting mechanic. Essentially, for uh, one yellow energy, she can choose an enemy player to discard a card. Well, why would you want to do that? Aside from it being good, her mechanic for leveling up, Queen of Thieves, at the end of your turn, choose an enemy player. If you have more cards in your hand than they do, you gain an XP equal to that difference amount. Then when you're going to level all the way up, you're going to get Cross Their Path. Essentially, any time you're in combat, she can daze an enemy character that's in combat with her. There's two sets of Phoenix in this. This is the Dark Phoenix. And I really love her mechanic as well. So, two yellow energy, um, play during the main phase, put the top two cards of your deck face down in your resource row. If any are locations, you may place them face up instead. So she has a really, like this huge drawing and um, resource heavy uh, mechanic. And the reason is, is she only has one thing to level up. And what it is, is when resources appear on both sides and they're equal to 20 or more total, bang, she's gonna level. Now, if you look at her though, she's no joke. She's flying in range, she goes to seven, seven and uh, Ravager of Warholds. Two telekinesis and a fist energy, KO all face down enemy resources. So. You can pretty much devastate someone with that card late in the game. Okay, so this is Mystique. Her Masquerade ability, it's going to cost a power energy. Essentially, you can choose another face-up character. Mystique gains attack equal to that character's attack for the combat, uh, which is great because notice it says face up. So if you have like the 7-6 Loki on the other side, boom, you can gain that because she's a 1-6. Now her Bitter Fury, and whenever Mystique gains attack, she gains that much EXP. So really the way to get her banged up, you're just going to want to wait till those big drops where you can do it in two swings. Um, or, you know, if you're playing Guardian of the Galaxy, you get the 13-13 do that. You can do it in one swing, actually. Uh, when she levels up, she becomes decent. You know, 6-7. Martial uh, Savagery. Mystique is ferocious, and we know ferocious is essentially first strike, so very good. Now, his little enchantress. Um, imbue with power, main phase, telekinesis energy. Put two 1-1 one -one counters on supporting characters that appear this turn. Pretty good. Uh, she's ranged as well. She only takes three to level up. At the end of your turn, if a uh, face-up supporting character on your side has higher attack than each face-up enemy supporting character, she gains an EXP. When she levels up, she's a 3-8. She's kind of tanky range, so this is obviously going to be one you want to lay in the cut in the back. I'm not slowly my hands. Ready each supporting character on your side that has a 1-1 counter, which is amazing because, as you know in this game, in the main phase, you're exhausting characters and you're coming back, then you can team attack, then attack with a single one. Once you've done that, ready them. Ready characters can attack again. Very nice. Captain Marvel. Now we're going over to the A-Force. So these are the, the good gals, as it were. I really like playing with her. Uh, she is the flight attendant. She's flying <laughs> and ranged. But essentially, she can pay a telekinesis, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Captain Marvel for every other ranged character on your side. So Woman of War, all it takes is four. When Captain Marvel stuns an enemy character in combat, she gains an XP. So essentially with her, you know, you're going to want to build her up with these 1-1 one -one counters, getting all just doing a ranged flying deck, keep her in the cut in the back, and then have her stun off some of the lower level enemies. So when she does level up, it's sort of a reverse. Uh, it costs one power energy on her main phase, and she can put a 1-1 counter on an enemy character for each 1-1 counter on Captain Marvel. So later in the game, you got all these 1-1 counters on her, you're banging her up, and then boom, whip out the red, and you can just lay a bunch of tokens down on everyone. Hurt them good. 
Now this is the good version of Phoenix. Essentially during your main phase, yellow energy, heal a wound from a supporting character, so it's good. Uh, the opposite of the dark one. She's ranged flying as well, the sum of life and death. Only one time when a character appears, if there are 20 or more total supporting characters on all sides and or in the KO piles, she gains an XP. So there's like a goblin queen in this that you can get some token supporting characters out. They're all 1-1, one, one, so a quick way to kind of build things up and throw it in the KO pile. Now her level up, she becomes a 7-7 seven, seven flying range, which is, you know, pretty fantastic. But essentially, from the ashes, telekinesis and a fist, put a character from your KO pile onto your side. This is Sister Grimm. Now, Sister Grimm, 2-5 range, only costs 1 to level. When Sister Grimm gets wounded on an enemy player's turn, she gains an XP. Notice she only becomes a 4-5, so nothing too terribly crazy with this. However, girl has options. So the first, red energy muzzle, characters on your side, can't be attacked until under your, your next turn. Bounce house, telekinesis, put up to two supporting characters into their owner hand. Open sesame, main phase yellow, draw three cards, or caffeine injection, which would be a fist. Put four 1-1 one -one counters on a supporting character. So she kind of does it all, and does it all very well. Only problem, only five health with a 4-5. So she is a little bit vulnerable, but she's ranged. As so long as you protect her in the back, you should be fine. And finally, Maybe my favorite, She-Hulk. She's a 3-4. She can pay a red power energy. When a character's on your side, team attack. The next time this turn, put a 1-1 counter on each of them. Very good. Do a big team attack. Get everyone with a bunch of counters. Fight together. When characters on your side team attack, she gains an XP. So she's all about knocking the shit out of people, so to speak, with team attacks. Now her level up is the rules lawyer, and I... I love this ability. It's an interrupt, you know? Yellow energy. When an enemy player uses a superpower, you may say, OBJECTION! If you do, cancel the superpower. Very good. 6-6 six, six as well. Tough girl with 6 health. Alright, so I'm just going to kind of fly through these because there's quite a few. You're going to notice with the A4s, they're all flying. They're all ranged. So this is sort of really like the first truly flight deck. You have a lot of options if you're looking for range and flight with this particular set. So we started off with Wasp, and she has Shrink, which I love. When Wasp gets attacked for the first time each turn, you may cancel the combat. It's very annoying for one. Uh, Sister Grimm, Pixie, Spider Woman makes an appearance, Megan, Medusa, uh, Singularity, Dazzler, She Hulk, Spectrum, Miss America. I like Miss America because she's a three with flying. Uh, when she gets stunned, you may recover her. She gets a wound, but she isn't stunned out, so she's perfect for the front row, especially with that flying ability. It's just fantastic. Loki has the most interesting mechanic in this, I think. So, uh, power hungry. Once per turn, when a character on your side gets powered up, draw three cards. Okay, that's cool. But she has questionable loyalty. And essentially says, at the start of your build phase, if a face-up character has higher attack than um, each face-up character on your side, move to the other player's side. So every turn, whoever has the highest attack, essentially gets Loki, and that's pretty dope. Rogue is cool, because anyone she kills, she steals their powers. 6-6 six, six flying. All their named abilities, everything, until she's KO'd or stunned. And then Phoenix, of course. Last but not least, the Femme Vitale. So we'll start off with Black Cat. Titania, or as my wife calls her, Tit. Anya, look at her boobs, it's ridiculous. Uh, Sin. Moonstone. Silver Sable, my girl. Silver Sable can team attack with any main character. Uh, Nebula. Look, this Nebula gets 3-3 if your main character is evil in level 2 or higher. Don't you love that? She could whip in anything, really. Uh, Moonstone. Uh, Spiral. Viper. Viper is ridiculous. Okay, so check this card out. You can, So you pay a red energy, put a negative 1, negative 1 counter on up to 2 enemy characters. Then succumb to poison. At the end of your turn, double the 1-1 one, one counters on the enemy characters. So that's ridiculous, especially with ranged. Great. But you can get a rogue, knock this girl out, steal those powers. Ooh, girl, it's devastating. Satana. Lady Deathstrike. When Lady Deathstrike stuns an enemy, main character of this combat, and survives, put an extra wound on that character. Tell me that ain't badass. Morgan Le Fay. And, of course, my girl, Enchantress. All right, Marvel versus A-Force. So, this game never ceases to surprise me of how they can keep it fresh. The main character mechanic, with each one having a completely new superpower ability that's going to be really OP at their level 2, and the level mechanic, which is going to sort of dictate how you build your deck, what options you want to use to sort of kind of succeed at that. 
It's always fresh, and they've done it again with this set. You have some completely new and different ways, like whether it's card management, you're trying to get a bunch of cards in your hand in order to get your level up, team attacking to gain levels, or resources, and building a deck where you have certain characters and things that can get you a bunch of resources laid down. So, really cool, good with the theme as well. All the ladies in here, real clean cut, pretty well known ones from the comic book series. I think they did a good job including the ones that people would want to play, especially Phoenix as an example, Black Cat. It's good stuff. I think it's a good set. Not my favorite, but definitely great. Really cool they did it with all the ladies and stuff. You know, now you have a set where it's just like all the girls, you know? Girl power, whoop some butt, all that cool stuff, uh, which is fine, I suppose. But those are my thoughts. You should definitely pick this one up. Marvel vs. I can't say it enough. It's just a fantastic alternative to people who would like a Magic the Gathering experience in a familiar superhero world. Because let's face it, one thing about Magic the Gathering, aside from all the other things about it, is that the theme of it is very lacking. I mean, what the hell are you doing in it? Now, I know they have, later on, I guess there's a lot of things with Planewalkers, and they've tried to do more with, like, the Origins, and that's my understanding anyway, but it's kind of meaningless. The superhero stuff, everyone knows who these superheroes are, and it's fun to play the superheroes. And a lot of these superheroes are really true to what their mechanics are. Take Phoenix, for example. So, you know, the Dark Phoenix, she has things with the negative counters and the destruction and destroying all the lands, blah, blah, blah. And then you got the Good Phoenix, she can heal. It's, it's essentially what it is, true to the theme of the game. And like we've seen that with the core set with the X-Men, and Wolverine's uh, ferocity, and the double attacking, and his healing ability, and all that good stuff. So, anyway, I'm Glenn Nandelstadt. This is Games Incorporated. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Make sure to thumbs up, like, share, subscribe this video. And if you see this game on the shelf, buy it. It's damn good. Thanks for watching. You have a good one. Games Incorporated. Y'all know what time it is. Games. Games, 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 incorporated games.